<laughs> All right. Hi, Jenk. Hi, yes, yes. Hi, yes. Um, as we know, we during our workshop sessions, we have also digital lectures um, by professionals from different fields of architecture. And Jenk Durley, he's an architect, he's a designer, he's a thinker. I don't know how many words I need to I need to, to describe you. A lot more. You are going well. Going well. Okay. The missions color. Actually, Jenk is going to give us a, a small presentation about his practice, how to find how things triggers his creativity, and how he's playing with the fiction and architecture. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Jenk. Maybe I'm going to turn off the microphone, then it's going to be much more better for us to hear. Definitely. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, great series of talks. Uh, uh, it's always a great pleasure to make a collaboration with Jan Takan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what a great, what a great, Manage, right? Manage. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to share my screen. My screen. Uh, of course, uh, first of, of course, all, staff promotion. Staff promotion. Uh, Please uh, follow me on Instagram. On Instagram. It is not that difficult. Not that difficult. Uh, nickname. Uh, nickname. Hey, Jenk Teredi. Hey, and I share. I, I swear, I share. I share. And uh, most of the things that I share there, uh, they are related to the speculation, research about uh, creating myself, um, presenting my ideas, ideas, always about new ways of new ways of my imagination. And uh, since uh, 2007, I am uh, writing this blog. Not so much currently, so but from time to time I put there uh, much more, more um, when I feel like to do it. Like to do it. And uh, recently I started to write uh, on it regularly, so check it out also. Of course, it's uh, Turkish, unfortunately. Most of the time it's in Turkish. Uh, but you can also find there some um, uh, information in English too. And this is uh, the uh, radio program that we uh, co produced with Right now, we are both of us away from Istanbul. Most of the time. Istanbul uh, it is uh, our co producers' obligation to do it. Most of the time, yeah, uh, Yamur, uh, 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 Turkish uh, speak, uh, speak. Uh, contributors of the workshop, they can also check out uh, um, uh, podcasts. Podcasts. As uh, Yata said, uh, I do uh, various stuff. I do various stuff. Some of them are like you know uh, like, uh, constructions uh, of uh, interiors or small small and and, and uh, I only build a couple of these kind of stuffs you know uh, small apartment buildings etc. So they are like uh, quite rare in a way, and I do um, uh, competitions too, and uh, urban scale projects I've done. And small structures, imaginary stuff, most of the time, and I share them on my uh, web page. Basically, this is a nobon.net. And you can hear me, right? Okay, okay, I continue. Uh, because all for a sudden there was a, a constant silence, which is great for me. But uh, yeah. So uh, this is my web page, and I make my uh, masters and uh, PhD research in uh, Istanbul Technical University. And uh, they were all about creativity and uh, everyday creativity in the cityscape and um, the creativity of the regular citizens and their contribution to the cityscape. And um, during those studies, I figured out that creative process is not something uh, mystical, 
So there are lots of um, structures that they can use. Uh, first of all, it should start um, with something uh, like curiosity, for sure, then questioning a lot and uh, not um, fearing from doing uh, some kind of failure, etc. Then working a lot, working a lot, and then you have to have a rest rest of ideas and uh, content that you uh, reached, then all for a sudden, um, I don't know what kind of cognitive, out of what kind of cognitive processes, but uh, you start to figure out some kind of hints of a new idea. And uh, it comes most of the time uh, on the least expected minute, in the least expected minute. Then you have to uh, falsify it, uh, if it's working well, if it is um, uh, unique or not. If it is unique and it is working well, then you can turn it into some kind of product uh, announcement or some kind of action. But if it's not, then you have to go back to the uh, first stages of that process. But it is not enough uh, because uh, all these um, literature on uh, creativity says that, first of all, you need to find your a domain and then you need to find your environment and um, I always thought that yeah architecture is some kind of uh, domain that I have big ambitions in I don't know I love to read about it I love to visit I love to con uh, make co collaborations with friends I uh, love to dig into the profession itself uh, its theory its uh, construction its practice etc but then the uh, environment is always a big um, uh, question because it's not only uh, in Turkey, but all around the world right now, uh, you may also uh, question your uh, environment if it is uh, inspiring for you or not. Um, on left-hand side, you see uh, one of the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci and right-hand side, uh, um, some kind of illustration of Hazar and Ahmed Celebi who lived in uh, 17th century. And uh, he, he believed uh, that he made the first manned, uh, you know, winged fly uh, from the uh, Galata Tower. And strangely enough, uh, no records of the consulates, uh, um, shows that to us, uh, but it is a saying by Evliya Celebi, who is a scholar uh, who wrote a kind of a fictional, uh, real uh, history of uh, the time that uh, when he lived, basically. And then he also mentioned uh, Hazar Fan's brother, Lagari, and he believed, uh, and Evliya Celebi says that he made the first uh, uh, manned rocket flight. Um, but uh, in this cultural uh, environment, uh, first they had been, um, you know, applauded by the uh, by the people who watched it, and then Sultan uh, uh, honored him with gold, etc. But then both of them had been exiled. One of them uh, exiled to Algeria. Uh, Lagari, the guy who uh, flied with the rockets, he uh, um, exiled to uh, Chimera. And uh, we know that in, in the modern times, the uh, first uh, um, uh, breakthroughs in the rocket technologies uh, starting from 19th century uh, came from Chimera area. So one thinks that, okay, is there a connection? Is, uh, do they uh, really uh, live, etc.? cetera? Um, but this is my cultural environment. This is my uh, cultural creative environment. Uh, even we do have uh, some kind of sayings the Turkish speaking contributors of the workshop will um, uh, know this for sure. Uh, we say that there is the saying that never come up with an uh, invention or never bring something new to the old uh, village. Uh, I know that there are lots of other uh, cultures uh, share this kind of stuff. So it is, um, it is a sign of conser uh, conservatism uh, in a way. But we are, uh, we are producing or at least we are imagining on uh, things uh, in a creative field, right? Which is architecture. And um, how can you um, expect from yourself to be creative in an environment which tries, which advises you to not to make innovations, to not to come up with something new, etc. 
And as I said, it is not only uh, something specific to Turkey, but it is um, in many places of the world. So, um, but this is the situation. This is where I live. This is uh, uh, where my roots are. This is, uh, this is the conditions of the resources that I can reach. Uh, of course, I can, I can reach also much more other resources, but this is the foundations of my existence, right? And um, you may know Rolla May, who uh, wrote the book, um, The Courage of uh, cre uh, Creating or uh, Being Creative. And uh, he says uh, uh, in, in that book, it states that um, uh, creativity, it's the, um, it's the moment when the, um, when the person uh, come face to face with, it is, with its own world. So it is basically about your world, my world, our world. Uh, it's so personal. So first of all, we need to, you know, uh, understand that uh, world or at least if there is uh, no world like that which inspires us then we had to in a way create the mood for ourselves and also to create the environment these are my basic instincts uh, uh, while uh, whatever i am doing right um, so i always thought like okay then i need to create some kind of environment for my own creativity and i asked these two questions um, what kind of resources can I find uh, from the history, from the local history, from the uh, contemporary culture, from 60s, 30s, blah, blah, whatever you, you say. What, can I, uh, what, can, what type of resources can I uh, grab out and use for my own creativity? And then um, to meet with people who are uh, distinct from the others uh, with their own creativity, uh, how I can uh, meet with them and where? Uh, these are these two uh, basic questions. So I start with the second one. Um, while having this question in my mind, I started to organize some parties to meet with new people from the other faculties, for other architecture faculties, graduate schools, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is how I uh, how I met, uh, as far as I remember, with Yalta. And uh, they started as a small parties, and then. Since uh, five years now, I am organizing uh, Pecha Kucha, um, global Pecha Kucha events, local branch uh, in Izmir, in my hometown. And since then, I reached uh, 131 uh, presenters, basically 131 creative people who are doing something inspiring in the local environment, local social, economic, and uh, political environment uh, of this town. Uh, of, of Izmir and uh, you can see the crowd so there are lots of uh, people who are also curious to watch what is going on and who are those people who share those inspiring stories and uh, lots of people had been inspired by them and in time they became one of the presenters of the event then I organized uh, with collaboration uh, in, in collaboration with other uh, people that I met in town, uh, designers market, and then I organized these uh, design days events. But it was two years ago. And then, of course, even though you can facilitate lots of resources and uh, people, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, there is always there is always a chance uh, something unexpected happen, and Turkey gives you lots of uh, you know reasons to uh, experience that kind of unexpected things. So lots of stuff happened in Turkey and I thought like, yeah, maybe I should stop a little and produce some other stuff. And then uh, here I come to the point where speculations, architect how I combine speculations, narratives, architecture, uh, history, deep history to uh, inspire my own creativity. So I thought like if the environment, uh, you know, provides me uh, little resources, then it is up to me how I can create uh, much more resources uh, by digging into um, some kind of, you know, unexpected re resources. And um, I created this motto to motivate myself uh, to see uh, the future, uh, look to the uh, past and to shape today, imagine uh, for the future uh, or on the future. And um, I started to look uh, to the photographs, uh, artifacts, 
and files uh, to create myself some kind of creative memory. And uh, I started to read um, literature uh, late uh, Ottoman times uh, to learn about uh, um, dreams of the past, basically. And I advise myself all the time to expect the unexpected. For example, there is one gazelle, one small uh, cute animal in between these uh, military guys who, uh, you know, most of them had uh, died uh, during the Battle uh, of Dardanelle. And, uh, and there is this uh, small story about that gazelle, etc. And then I, I quite like this uh, picture because I always think that, yeah, this is a good reminder for me to look at the photographs and any kind of artifact uh, to see uh, the unexpected. And then I started to look at the old magazines. Uh, this is one uh, from 1891. Uh, it says that artificial bird. Uh, so in Ottoman Empire, we, I always thought like, yeah, 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 the modern Turkey created all these progressive ideas, but before then that there was nothing, and obviously not. It was uh, the empire was also sharing the, um, you know, let's say um, a global um, uh, creative um, imaginary, and uh, everybody was aware of uh, all technological breakthroughs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They even, you know, publish and share it and talk about it in their everyday life. And uh, this is a, a caricature um, uh, from a comic magazine uh, from early 20th century. You can see this flying machines and um, all the advertisement, etc., etc. And the woman is uh, flying with this uh, a plane, quite simple looking plane, and uh, a policeman with a balloon behind flying and trying to regulate the traffic system. Then I come up, come across to these uh, images. They are like uh, fish traps um, from Istanbul, uh, beautiful wooden structures, and there is no hint uh, remained from them. Uh, they only exist in the photo, uh, photo albums of uh, the Sultan, uh, who gave some kind of order uh, to collect uh, lots of images uh, all around the empire. And I try to understand how they might be built, and I try to draw, and also try to provoke my uh, imagination to create um, non-related relations. Because uh, there were people who imagined on quite exciting stuff uh, early 20th centuries. You know, uh, we know uh, we all know Jules Verne, and Jules Verne had been translated in uh, Ottoman many times. Uh, there was uh, there is a, a great uh, PhD study on that also, and there was this imagination, uh, there was this um, not tradition but uh, motivation to uh, imagine on the future or um, um, a dream on the future. And in this, uh, in one book, uh, Molla Davut Zadeh, he uh, wrote uh, 400 years, uh, you know, Istanbul in 400 years basically. Uh, so he was imagining uh, bridges, uh, automated cars, and um, pocket-sized uh, cinematography machines, and lots of other quite interesting stuff. Uh, but I am a, a big fan of the bridge and the bridges of Bosporus uh, because of the topography of it. So when I first read this book, I was amazed because he was describing a three-story uh, high uh, bridge. Of course, this was not the first one which is imagined uh, on Bosporus. This is one of the proposals had been made to the Sultan Abdul Hamid II uh, in uh, mid 19th century, and um, so this is the this is the uh, Bosporus basically. On right hand side, you see the Black Sea. On left hand side, you see Marmara Sea, and um, the first uh, A is the uh, one of the existing uh, uh, bridges and uh, one of the first proposals. B is the um, uh, one of the second proposals made to the Sultan, and C is the bridge uh, which is described in the book. And uh, then, of course, I watch Turkish movies, etc. Then I see uh, you know scenes like this: a bride is running going into some kind of, you know, chamber and go up. All of a sudden, I realized that, okay, this is the first bridge of Istanbul, and she runs. And obviously, lots of people are walking on the bridge. 
And um, then I realized that, okay, yeah, this bridge had been built uh, also to be a pedestrian bridge, which connects the Asia and uh, Europe. And then I went to the uh, magazines and the drawings of this bridge and figured out that uh, there is this um, um, elevator uh, inside of the um, columns of the um, towers. And then uh, the section of it had been uh, designed for being a pedestrian bridge, but it only remained three years as a pedestrian bridge. Then they had been bent. They, they bent it. But then when you go into deep into the uh, archives, etc., you see these kind of uh, you know pictures. You know people biking on the uh, bridge uh, during the construction phase, and there are lots of uh, contemporary uh, imaginary. Uh, on Istanbul and the new skyscraper uh, silhouette of it and how the urban transformation will change the cityscape, etc., which you can see uh, here. The neighborhood skyscrapers are already there. And I was like, okay, imagining that, yeah, maybe in a short period of time, all these um, neighborhood skyscrapers will fill all urban scape and the only um, opening will remain, uh, uh, the only opening will be Bosporus itself. And then the Bosporus bridge, the first bridge will be quite old at that time. So maybe there will be a motivation to uh, to turn it uh, into a pedestrian urban escape, maybe a green bridge or something like that. And this is a project that I made in 2012 or something like that. And uh, there was no, uh, political protests in Turkey and uh, anyway it was an interesting thing to uh, think about that or imagine or speculate about that because this is possible at the end this is possible I mean to refacilitate the uh, bridge like this it's possible but also um, you know a city uh, created by urban uh, skyscraper neighborhoods it's also possible it is happening right now and this kind of imaginary um, it's quite, uh, for me, provocative to uh, think about today, what we are doing, how we are doing, etc. And um, the bridge is um, in use of pedestrians uh, only for one day during a marathon. So why not to turn it into some kind of, you know, 365 day uh, pedestrian usage? and facilitate with museums, these and that, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I uh, watch uh, a lot uh, of Turkish movies to provoke my uh, urban memory. And um, there are lots of great movies. And uh, we made also a collaboration with Yalta uh, in one of the uh, exhibitions that he was curating. And um, we went into this uh, old Turkish movies and uh, I will just fast forward to show you the environment and the representation of it. So it's not that important what they are saying right now, but it is more like the villa, uh, villa and big windows, the representation of the society or uh, one person's societal statue uh, with the environment, etc. But then uh, realizing that kind of issue in a quite popular Turkish movie, I thought like, yeah, this must be a, 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 a common topic in the magazines or in the everyday life uh, in the culture. So I went back to the magazines and saw this quite well designed um, uh, villas. And um, you can see the plotis, the elevated uh, rooms and holes uh, on the uh, walls to create some kind of you know new way of uh, getting light inside etc there are lots of uh, you know uh, research and uh, experiments on creating this kind of environments and in the movies you can see the hints of it on uh, in upper corner left uh, there was one you know interesting villa and right hand side you see this middle class people and the sales office uh, model and the salesman. And then below you see this people who created themselves a floating home uh, to 
get rid of the regulations of the um, state and also the rich men, basically. So I visit these um, movies and um, created posters by using a couple of uh, mottos in the movies and prepared these posters. These are like two side posters, uh, which um, which include some scenes uh, from the from the um, movies. And while you are, while I was uh, drawing this kind of scenes for sure, then you, you, I realized the details and of course thought about uh, the uh, the issues which was real at that time and how time does not how time can't change many things while it is changing uh, quite many other stuff so this was also some kind of realization for me uh, how the cultural uh, social political environment is breathing and living and uh, as i said there are lots of things in the magazines and i'm a big fan of temporary structures uh, which build in uh, turkey and uh, Trade fairs used to be a great uh, um, stage um, to share the contemporary uh, architectural and design-related abilities uh, of nations, uh, starting from uh, starting from early uh, late 19th century and extended into the uh, 20th and 21st century with expos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's still something like this, and Venice uh, Biennale is the same thing, if you ask me. And uh, as you can see here, there are these pavilions from 1936, and then in 1960s, uh, these are uh, all uh, pavilions built in Izmir, in my hometown, in uh, during this uh, international trade fair. And uh, these pavilions uh, directly uh, reflect the uh, the construction abilities, design abilities, material related abilities of um, the architects uh, lived at that time, and uh, the architectural environment um, which was uh, exist at that time. I mean, in Turkey, in Izmir, uh, and how uh, trade and construction and design. Uh, has um, related. They show also all of these. And as you can see, there are lightweight structures and uh, even things like Jean Prouvé's designs, etc. It's, it's uh, obvious, the connection is obvious because they were contemporary. And uh, But then I looked to the drawings, how these designs had been represented, and then and then think about today or think uh, think about the the times that i was in the university and uh, how i did draw and i think how i do draw right now etc so another project from 60s 69 it is a you know a dome glowing in the night then yeah, no one did show me while i was a student and while i was a young graduate etc so i have to uh, dig in by myself to see this kind of stuff because pavilion thing is a big thing right uh, lots of uh, international uh, well-respected um, competitions are there serpentine pavilion is there venice Biennale is all about pavilions and spaces etc and there are these beautiful uh, well-designed well-built um, architectural memory is hidden in in these uh, magazines that i didn't know uh maybe i was the only one who did not know maybe everybody did know but uh not me then i of course in my mind at least clash this uh, uh local uh, architectural uh creativity with contemporary architectural creativity the serpentine pavilions uh after 2000s it started in 2000s and then uh, i tried to create this strange interrelation between the OMA's 2006 Serpent Pavilion and uh, 69 uh, the one pavilion that I showed you, the dome, uh, the glowing dome pavilion uh, from 1969. Then I, of course, try to 
design or imagine something by myself by learning uh, from these uh, images and architectural imaginary at that time. Um, and not only that, I I had been uh, you know, while looking at those pavilions, it is uh, quite difficult to imagine some kind of concrete architectural ideas and some kind of architecture which will be a, the 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 sign, the identity of any kind of place, etc. So when I uh, come up with some kind of competition related to the public space, of course, um, uh, maybe it's natural. I think about temporality and you know inventive way of ways of uh, creating some kind of public space in collaboration with people etc this was a competition i didn't won i didn't get any prize but i love uh, to share this idea and they expected to build on this parking lot uh, that you can see and a 600 square meter service building which provides different types of solutions that you expect from an exhibition uh, space but I thought, like, yeah, why not to, uh, why, why, rather than uh, proposing some kind of building, why not to propose a method and also some kind of structures uh, that they, that uh, can playfully transform that environment into the uh, desired public space. So I introduced, I, I, I proposed uh, cars rather than, um, you know, uh, static structures, movable cars, but they are so big, you have to uh, negotiate with people, discuss with people, and with their help, uh, only with their help, you can uh, rearrange, reshape the public space. So I propose this huge cars, and of course a balloon, which will be the signage, which will uh, be visible from the coast uh, to attract uh, people from the uh, upper um, zones of the um, of this historical uh, space in in uh, Lisbon, Lisbon, and, um, and um, yeah, you can see the yeah, can see the, 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 the layout that I proposed. That I proposed, and uh, uh, at that time, it, that time, it, all the street clashes was so. Uh, so popular and widespread, and widespread, widespread, widespread in all the situation, the situation in Istanbul. So the, uh, I thought, like, yeah, this part is part of the kind of neighborhood uh, forum. Whenever people like the people like or that they can, uh, they can use it as a nice market. Uh, but these cars, these cars, uh, caravels, uh, uh, some kind of interpretation of traditional uh, Portuguese. Uh, Portuguese uh, uh, ships, uh, ships. They can work as the starter uh, of this uh, project, and then uh, these are like you know historical stuff, uh, things related to public space, temporality, etc. How I uh, provoke my uh, uh, own creativity, but then there is also uh, the issue of the word system, earth system, uh, deep history, and new normals, right? So in, as an architect, it is difficult to uh, close yourself, at least for, for me, it is difficult for me to close myself to all the data and information related to the history and the possible uh, futures. So for example, there is this uh, thing happened, Black Sea uh, Dulge hypothesis. Um, obviously, this was the time when the Bosporus and uh, Dardanelles connected the Aegean Sea, basically the Mediterranean with Black Sea. And this was a catastrophic change in the sea level uh, because uh, at that time, these ice caps and everything, almost everything had melt. And this was the time when this Black Sea uh, created, I mean, not created from scratch, but Black Sea became a sea. It was a lake uh, before then that. And right now we are dealing with rising sea levels, and uh, you know, ice, uh, you know, melting ice caps, etc., and all other issues related to the Anthropocene. But in the history of the, in the near history of the human kind, we experienced lots of this kind of stuff. Ephesus, an ancient, famous, quite famous city, it was a um, harbor city. But then, in just in a couple of centuries, uh, all the harbor had been filled, and people must uh, witness uh, this change in. Uh, generations 
and uh, some people may uh, experience it one lifetime that this you know uh, this land or the, let's see the the sea area filled with the land uh, brought by this river uh, right now it is uh, you know quite uh, away from uh, the um, sea coast but uh, only in 3000 years uh, the area had been filled and we know it in the history and there are lots of examples of this in the and in Turkey, this is Miletus' famous ancient uh, city again. It was a harbor city, but it had been the whole harbor and basically all uh, flatland had been filled with uh, a river. So we expect, we, we experience these kind of changes in our everyday life. And we always talk about, ah, oh, yeah, rising sea levels. It will happen sometime later, but actually, Things like that had happened and things like that will happen and they are still happening in the moment that we are living in. And this is uh, one, some kind of speculation that we made about a, a quite famous uh, a touristic place in, uh, in Turkey. And you can see the change uh, of the footprint of the constructions uh, in uh, 11 years. And this was the city core, but it expanded because it became quite famous and profitable to make there a touristic investment. And uh, but we are talking about rising sea levels and new normals and the uh, rapid changes, etc. Right. So this is the uh, existing situation, but we speculated like that. Yeah, what will happen if the sea level rises four meter, which is the worst uh, projection right now? But what? Uh, what about uh, if force it become worse? And um, we, but we thought like, yeah, don't don't think it's some kind of disastrous ending, but uh, think about it some kind of you know new normal. And uh, that area is uh, quite rich with wind source, uh, wind uh, you know winds, uh, because because of that you can produce lots of wind energy and uh, you can have their almost 300 days sun, so uh, you can wear PV um, uh, fields. Uh, but we thought like, yeah, why not? Why not to uh, take it like a disaster, but take it like a new normal? So maybe this will be the new coastline. There will be some kind of canals and these houses, the existing, some of the existing houses will remain uh, on the surface of the uh, see so it can be quite interesting some kind of quite romantic uh, also environment to ex there is this motorway passing through uh, some of you you may uh, still continue to use some parts of the motorway but some parts will be sunken in the sea and maybe this uh, holiday village this is a, a collage photo collage so the houses represents the existing environment uh, of it, but maybe it can turn into a uh, new uh, Venezia. And uh, it's quite strange that you are in Venezia right now and I'm sharing this thing. Uh, and that uh, that place is famous for windsurfing and maybe this will be the new, uh, you know, most liked uh, photograph on Instagram in, in the near future. And I also like to uh, create connections in between uh, non-related things. So we all know these, uh, you know, post-avant-garde um, or avant-garde of 60s speculations or architectural imaginary. Uh, we know Archigram, we see it everywhere. It influenced a lot. And I'm sure Peter Cook was there also during the opening and Instant City and all these, you know, construction methods related to engineering and in uh, in uh, connection with media, uh, new representation of the city, uh, changing the city, etc., and uh, Alan Botwell's uh, representation of a one million person city, uh, it's quite interesting in many ways for me, inspiring also. So all these uh, images related to elevations, you know, representations as elevations, representations as uh, plan drawings or these kind of quite, uh, you know, uh, amazing uh, focus, uh, focus drawings, 
uh, quite inspiring in many ways. And it also inspired my uh, local architectural uh, memory and imaginary too. This is one of the projects from uh, late 70s by uh, two young architects uh, uh, who, who was practicing at that time. One of them is practicing still. And uh, they also propose some kind of superstructure which will re uh, rehabilitate, uh, rehabilitate uh, the uh, coastal line. So it was also contemporarily in the architectural imaginary uh, of uh, the local environment where I seek my uh, inspiration also. But then uh, I always thought like, you know, see after seeing all these uh, speculations, I always think that yeah, architecture is all about speculation when one starts to draw a line. And uh, it's imagined nurtured with aesthetics and ideas of early avant-garde for sure, and the, with the history. So the 60s and 70s had been nurtured also from the past. For example, this is Le Corbusier uh, from 30s, amazing model. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he proposed 15 kilometer long building in Algeria. Of course, he must think that yeah, Algeria is a you know a blank canvas, so I can do whatever I like to do, as if he uh, imagined on Paris. Uh, but then all these uh, speculations related to uh, not the building, but also about the existing situation, uh, tells us a lot and inspires me a lot too. So why not to? just imagine and just try to draw things uh, to free my imagination too. So I started to um, draw uh, imaginary landscapes um, already two years ago, I guess. And uh, I tried to understand the representation of plans and then the perspective. So I draw some kind of plan and then draw its perspective or vice versa, try to, uh, you know, um, intersect or superimpose, you know, architectural, uh, you know, archaeological excavation sites with the uh, uh, urban scape uh, representations, and I don't know crazy stuff uh, that I don't know even. Of course, science fiction inspires me a lot, but I just try to uh, investigate. Because um, whenever I draw something uh, and uh, whenever I say some, uh, I say to myself that okay, this is something crazy. Then you know, in a couple of days, while I was surfing in on Instagram or somewhere else, I see some kind of environment, uh, and some kind of intersection of motorways, which is much more crazier than I draw. Uh, but I keep uh, on going to 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 also find myself another you know voice or method and i do it not uh, not only with plants but i investigate on uh, sections but that section can be easily uh, you know read as a plan too and uh, besides the drawings i try to create this you know quite strange uh, images to speculate about my uh, contemporary built environment. This is the Bosporus Bridge, which is collapsed. Uh, we don't know why, but there is this light installation right now. And this, this, seri this series of uh, images has the name Images to Dream uh, Possible Reasons. So rather than starting with reasons and then designing, I, uh, I am right now much more willing right, uh, to do something and then try to figure out what might have happened. And this is another image. Um, the last thing that I will show you is uh, the Canal uh, Istanbul project. This is the crazy project because the reality is always much more uh, creative uh, than us, uh, at least than me. And uh, this is a project had been introduced by Erdogan. Uh, to connect the Black Sea and the Marmara Sea uh, by creating an alternative route to uh, Bosporus Bridge. But it had been built, you know, this kind of stuff had been built. And uh, this is the current canal uh, had been, which is built in a, 
1881. And uh, it looks like this. So imagine the drawings that I made, right? You know, the Google images is full of these kind of quite interesting man-made anthropogenic uh, uh, actions visible uh, from space. And uh, yeah, this is the Corinthian Canal. It's quite uh, narrow. And Suez Canal, right? It had been built mid 19th century, still in use and still changing. So this is uh, quite contemporary uh, extension of it, um, just built in three years. So why not? And I was, you know, I was competing in myself, uh, in my mind. Uh, okay, is it possible? So if I can, I interpret uh, with the, that information. Then, of course, while checking out lots of stuff, as I said that I do, uh, I came uh, across to Brodsky and Utkin's uh, drawings uh, from 80s uh, from uh, uh, Soviet Socialist uh, Republic so before the times, the before the times of the uh, you know co in contemporary Russia. So they speculated about uh, many things. Uh, when it comes to representation uh, of this cityscape, politics, this and that, etc., uh, by using drawings as a method and architectural representation as a method. Then I came uh, across to this uh, drawing from a magazine, uh, early 20th century, and it is right after uh, one revolution that happened in Ottoman Empire, and it is a grand arche kind of uh, thing. And it says that uh, a play, uh, 33 uh, pieces, because uh, the uh, last sultan, which had been withdrawn uh, from the crown, uh, has served 33 years. And I thought, like, yeah, this is an interesting thing, because this uh, grand arch uh, connects the old city and the para. Uh, basically, this is the um, uh, golden horn. So why not I? Uh, imagine, of course, inspired by Brodsky and Utkin, and also the uh, Canal Istanbul project, the crazy project, and also from this uh, drawing that I found uh, from early tw uh, 20th century, why not I imagine on some kind of interesting uh, uh, or at least speculative future uh, for the settlements around Canal Istanbul. So I started to draw this kind of stuff. Uh, there are like uh, A3 format, uh, they, they, you can put all this surface in an A3 format, so it can give you a, a understanding about the size. So this kind of stuff. This is these are like a series of drawings, and I also write uh, some kind of you know story uh, related to these sectors. Uh, what is happening in that sector? Uh, what is what type of you know qualities does it have? or traps or i don't know positive or negative size etc and uh, i attended uh, to a competition with these drawings and the two of them that you can see on right hand side they are in this exhibition in moscow right now uh, which is a part of a um, uh, sixth uh, moscow biennale of architecture and it requires quite attention i quite like this photograph that they sent to me because it requires quite big attention to get into the details uh, of the drawing, which which uh, I think it's great. So this is my this is my method to see the uh, the future. I have to look back and uh, to shape today. I need to imagine on the future. So I need to uh, you know invent my own methods and I need to invent my uh, own resources. So uh, this can be also asked in the question form. What are your methods? Uh, what are your resources that you inspire yourself to create your own creative memory and creative environment? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. That's all. <laughs> Can you hear me? Did you all sleep? Did you all sleep? sleep? <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you hear us now? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. 
Did, did I speak too long? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's fun. Um, is there any questions for him? Wow. 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 <laughs> how can I, how can I answer? How can I answer? No? No? What? What? Yeah. You can use a microphone. Yeah. Hi, uh, I really liked your presentation. I really like this concept of uh, uh, research through design, and I really like the fact that you create, you use these uh, creative methods along with uh, research to reflect on the current reality and on the future. I think it's uh, it's very interesting, and we basically saw like that you used. Um, uh, the creation of images, production of uh, digital images, and also like a research in an archive level. Uh, do you think there are other practices or do you use any other practices uh, on your work? Is there like any other aspects of life or science that you utilize to uh, enrich this process? Um, uh, as, as you might understand, understand. Uh, I don't uh, have a have a side of it. Jank, we might have a kind of method, kind of method. Screen, method. Then we will then hear then about the by chance, by chance, by you know, crazy motivation or something like that. And uh, that's why sometimes I draw a lot um, by my hand. Uh, but sometimes I just don't do anything like that for two months or something like that and focus on uh, models or collages, etc. But uh, I think that it is quite interesting to use uh, multimedia resources, not only to represent what you want to tell, but also to um, investigate on oneself's desires, uh, abilities, and motivations. I am talking about movies, I am talking about literature, I am talking about, I don't know, you know, podcasts, radio shows, this and that, words, uh, photography, uh, archives, and anything. But uh, not something specific comes into my mind related to your question, but um, as I said, I, I sometimes I'm so hardworking. Sometimes I am quite lazy, but extreme lazy. Uh, so this distraction also, in a way, helps me to uh, to leave one method and then to start to work with another one too. So I don't know if it's an answer to you, but as I said, there is no specific method. So when it, the question comes about really about specific methods, then I don't know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. There is also another question. Oh, there is also another question. So, um, obviously, in the process of design, we're always inspired by the past, as can also see, like, be seen in some of your works. So. Um, Oh, and like obviously there isn't such a thing as creating from nothing. I feel like the difference is just in between being aware of knowing, you know, um, what you were influenced by versus not knowing. And um, wh where do you think the limit lies when you're being, you know, inspired by something already done or like an idea that has been done versus, you know, like when um, I'm just like uh, trying to ask if you could still maintain being original while trying to, you know, make something from the past come back to life, kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you want to close the microphone, I will take off. Oh, okay, you already did. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, genuinity or originality is, of course, a big uh, question, but then we also 
see in the past, like the situationists, they take some kind of images and then uh, derive it, they reuse it, like ready-made to uh, first destroy their own message and second of all to create a new type of a message or a new layer of a message uh, by using the same uh, image in a different kind of uh, environment. And this is not only in the, uh, let's say, artistic, artistic slash design slash uh, um, political criticism sphere, but it also had been used by, uh, you know, pop art, arts, etc., like ready-made objects and everything. So uh, inspiration, and there, there is also these kind of sayings by Picasso, blah, blah, you know, the great artist is still and yeah, things like that but uh i am more interested in the inspiration aspect of it so if i am inspired by something and if i want to copy it uh in the way that it is uh which is great because it uh, pushed me <laughs> to do something to start something uh, without thinking much uh, and then uh, while I am doing, I realized that, okay, this is for me uh, impossible to 100% uh, imitate what I, uh, what I had been inspired. So then I start to realize some kind of different type of uh, representation uh, that I can do. Um, so yeah, that's why uh, I don't know what is the boundary or the limit for uh, for being inspired or using something that I am inspired as a thing that I am, uh, you know, representing uh, or as a thing that uh, that belongs to me, let's say, because uh, there is always some kind of, it's always ends somewhere else, uh, not uh, at the point that it starts. That's why, that's why maybe, uh, the genuinity is not the question, but the push uh, of that inspiration is much more important for me when I am uh, going through all of this stuff. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take the last one. OK. OK. Hello, uh, you said it's like looking uh, past to see future. Uh, which part of you, which part of past are you looking uh, and how, uh, how do you set up or organize uh, uh, co context, uh, with, uh, context between past and future? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I looked at everything. I must confess, so I don't, I don't have a specific period of time. But uh, maybe I am lying right now. So I look most of the time 60s, 70s uh, popular culture related stuff in Turkey, and their relation, their international relations. So music cinema, uh, magazines, right? And then I look to uh, late 20th century and early, uh, sorry, late 19th century and early 20th century. Again, magazines, illustrations, representations, stories. Um, and my resources are digital uh, archives. But plus, I wander in libraries um, whenever I go to Paris, to London, to somewhere else. I, again, look to the documents which might interest me uh, on the architectural imaginary or fictional uh, futures. And uh, not only related to uh, those countries and the geographies and their point of view, but also I try to uh, check uh, some documents or try to find some hints of uh, images um, which reflects Turkey, Ottoman Empire, East, Orientalism, etc., etc. And 
I also uh, focus to deep history very much. How the earth had been created and how did it evolve and uh, the, the past that we, and the past uh, which is uh, older than the time period that we call history, because we call history uh, or historical times, we, we start the history uh, with the invention of the writing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in the in the in the formal canon of uh, historic theory, right? Uh, but it is also invented. It is also invented in 19th century, and there are lots of civilizations. There are lots of settlements. There are lots of representations of everyday life on the walls of the caves, uh, on the fields, etc., and uh, the earth itself. It has its own language, and it's also it's it has its own uh, structures, right? Mountains, volcanoes, rivers. It change all the time. The plants tells a lot of stuff. So, uh, basically, maybe these three are my main focuses of my uh, research. Not I am not doing it on purpose, but I do it. Uh, unconsciously and whenever I come up with something related to those contexts then I get into uh, deep I look more try to find more and follow the leads which takes me to the unexpected um, places Thank you for the answer. Uh, and have you ever thought uh, the past would be a fiction? It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Whatever you, whatever you, you per perceive right now, for example, as a person who is sitting there in the middle of all of these people in Poland, yeah. this is also a, also a, a this is, a, this is a fiction that you are uh, constantly, real time, that you create in your mind. Because this is your perception of what is going on. And everybody else uh, who are sitting around that desk, uh, they do have their own realities. And as past is a fiction, today, this moment is also a fiction, too. <laughs> fiction in creation, let's say. Uh, that's an important thing and future will be uh, you know a, com a, 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 a collection of possible futures happening at the same time uh, but uh, experienced in different uh, levels there are lots of uh, quite uh, graphics and theories uh, on the representation of the future that's why i always that's why i said uh, in my motto to shape the future uh, to to shape uh, today imagine on the future because uh, we can also think vice versa we always think that okay whatever we do it shape the future but then if we can uh, foresee the future then we can shape now which will lead us to that uh, future so you may say it ah uh, this is quite similar to planning and or you know creating some kind of goals in life etc cetera, etc cetera, whatever you call it but the the let's say the mentality how you how we perceive it changes a lot And the second, yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Jeng. You're welcome. You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> Have a nice time. Have a nice time. Uh, yeah. Five yeah. minutes on YouTube, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. I remember this thing. But it's from where? <laughs> yeah, you know how does it work? <laughs> yes. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Have fun. Uh, Have fun. Take care. Take care. And, and uh, work hard. Work hard. <laughs> Thank you.